in this business. He's a, he's a smart, calculating man, and he, he's, he's a master of, of creating things, a very creative man. He put that gimmick on me, Harley Davidson. And same thing with Lawler. You know, Jerry Lawler has never, he's drove by millions of gyms, but I don't think Jerry's ever actually been in a gym. But you know what? To his credit, he always kept himself looking good in the ring, and his presence in the ring was was so dominating in the way he knew exactly when, where, and how to do what he did. He knew how to throw the punch. He knew how to work the crowd. He was a magnificent showman. Uh, but but and then and to, to Jerry's credit, he never did drink and uh, and do any kind of uh, side substances. He was pretty much focused on that. There was a while there when I had a little a little little problem with John Studd. Me and John and I love John now. And, this and is in New York. Yeah, yeah, in okay. New York. Uh, John will try to take advantage of you a little, a little in the ring. You know he would because first, if 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 I was in, if Andre and I were wrestling him and Bundy, he wasn't gonna get anything off Andre. He had to take it on me, because hmm. you know that when you give it to Andre the tag, it's gonna be the Andre thing because right. Andre would do the Bundy and Stud thing and blah blah blah. Right. Then then we started shooting those vignettes of of Hogan training me. Yeah. <laughs> And so that's where my career was born. And the first, I, the first official WWF match I had was in uh, Poughkeepsie with. Uh, uh, back you, in our day, it was people. Guys were cracking left and right. I've won. I've cracked before and just run off and run home because you just lose it. You know, a lot of guys I believe in in their days, kind of subliminally <laughs> or subconsciously, were begging for an injury so they could just go home. Right. As long as it wasn't a horrible injury. You know, Ray Hernandez, Hercules Hernandez. God bless his soul too. He went ninety some days in a row without missing the. I mean, without missing a, a match. He worked crazy. every night ninety some days. If you're That's baby face, heel, good or bad. If you go to that bar long enough, you're gonna have problems. Hercules Hernandez, who we just mentioned, he lost a lawsuit somewhere in the middle of the country, some little in some little, little town, because he was in the bar and he got in an argument with some dude. I, mean, well, I was one of the first guys that got the shot that came from the Memphis territory. To the WWF, right? Right. And the Hillbilly Jim thing got over, you know. Vince McMahon calls Jimmy Hart. Jimmy thinks it's surreal. <laughs> oh, yes, you're, you're. And it's really Vince. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Next thing you know, I get the phone call. <laughs> oh, baby, I love you. Hold on. What's going on, Jimmy? What happened? Oh, baby, I love you. I said, oh, settle down. And he explained it to it's me. The best. He explained it to me. <laughs> oh, baby, I tell you right now, I love you, brother. I love you, I love you. I love you. I'll do, oh, my God, I love you forever. Oh, my God, I can't wait. And he's I'm, got a match against King Kong Bundy. He ain't going. It's already advertised. Fence is livid. Electric. You got to go. Me got to go. You got to go. How am I going to get there? Commercially, they hired a Learjet. So I'm flying along, and one, one, one of the captains says, Hey, you must be a pretty important guy. And I'm sitting back there going, Me? He said, Yeah. He said, You must be a pretty important guy. I says, Why do you say? He says, Wow. He says, It's flying you over here by yourself. I said, How much does it cost to fly me? He says, $27,000. Now remember, this is in the 80s, yeah. brother. This is in the 80s. If we take me to the arena. He said, no, I'll just take your time. He said, don't worry about it. I said, no, I need to get there. He says, don't worry about it. He said, I'm to take you to the hotel. I said, brother, I got to be at the Providence Civic Civic Center. The dude looked around over the corner. He says, Uncle Elmer showed up. Wow. That's heat. He cost him 27 grand for me. Let me what? say about Andre. I miss him very much. He, he left us too soon. And he was always wonderful to me. We had some good laughs together. However, I must tell you, if he liked you, he liked you. If he didn't like you, he wouldn't give you time of day. I didn't care if you were a socialite, a dignitary, a movie star. It didn't matter who. He didn't care. Everybody knows the story about Don McKid, a vicious ribber. Everybody knows he likes to rib and... And he liked to do all these kinds of things, and and uh, you know, and he shit disturber, so to speak. And 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 then he'd be a little bit salty, and he was rude. It ain't my fault. Nobody told him to go out there and abuse his body, take all those bumps, jump off the top of the ceiling into a teacup because it's cool. Oh, it's cool now. But when you get to be older and you're in a wheelchair and you got a million pains, now who's cool? Now who feels good? See, that's what I'm trying to say. But, but, and nobody, all the times that I've seen him, you're drinking some water. I've never seen him drink a glass of water in my life. He was either coffee or beer. He right. never had, and a cigarette continually in his mouth. So, you know, he was burning, and then, and then, like I say, he was, he was, he was mean to his family. 
Got thrown away. Nobody cares about him. I didn't see it happen. He showed up in about a half hour after it happened and was smiling like this with his teeth missing. Who'd you? His teeth were gone. You take drugs, you drink on top of them, you might not wake up. Right. I got 50 guys I could start naming names off here. That's all happened to them. And that's what I say. I want to go back and say about this, about these guys in this business. All these guys running around here talking about how cool he's doing all these crazy, amazing bumps. It's supposed to be entertainment. If you can't figure out how to entertain yourself, the, the people without killing yourself, then maybe you need to get another business. That's just my way. Well, that's why they're all running around here with hips and, and all weird looking and stuff like that. And I ain't got none of that. Everybody asked me what happened to Chris Benoit. It wasn't steroids. If it was steroids, every bodybuilder and powerlifter and shot putter in the world would be killing people. They take a lot more than he took. It was, it's not steroids. Concussions. I know for a fact he was knocked out every weekend for years up there in Calgary when he was coming down from Edmonton, wherever he was from, down to Calgary to try to learn how to wrestle because Bruce Hart told me he just wanted to be like dynamite kids so bad and do that head thing. He would get up in the, in the, in the corner on the turnbooks and come off there and he said knock himself out every time. We're in the, we're in the Joe Louis Arena. I'm wrestling Ra Rowdy Roddy Piper in Detroit, Michigan. He'll Billy Jim, babyface. I go out there, what the hell is this? They're booing me and cheering him. That's when I knew the business had done gone crazy. I said, Bleh. 